In this video, I'm going to show you how to install PlayStation 2 games on your PlayStation 4 that's jailbreakable on official firmware version 7.02 or lower. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video so that you get all the steps that you need to get your PlayStation 2 games working. Before you attempt to copy over your ISO or BenQ files to your PlayStation 4, I would strongly urge you to go to the PlayStation 2 emulation list because here's the deal. Not every game is going to work on the PlayStation 4, and some of the ones that do are going to have graphical or other glitch errors. In fact, the game I've selected for this demonstration, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron, does in fact work on the console, but it does have some graphical glitch errors, and that's why I wanted to choose it specifically. Because here's the deal. Most of the PS2 games that you attempt to load to your PS4 are going to have some kind of graphical or other kind of issues to them. But every day, this list gets better and better as the emulation continues to improve. As you see here, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron is going to have some issues with black bars in the menus and some other graphical glitching, but it does run and the sound works on it, and that's why I've selected this game. I think it's representative of what you're going to find in this process because it does in fact work, but has some challenges. And overall, it's a good demonstration game because it's not terribly large either. Before you start to convert any PlayStation 2 images you have over to PKG files, check this list first to make sure that what you're doing is going to be a worthwhile effort. To play your PS2 ISO or BenQ files on your PlayStation 4, you'll need to convert them into what's called an FPKG or fake package file. The download for this is called PS2 FPKG and it's on the PSX Place website, a well-trusted and respected source. Scroll down on the page linked in the description below until you get to the download link, which is going to take you to a Mediafire website. I recommend going through PSX Place and not directly to the Mediafire link every time because the software is frequently updated and was updated within two weeks of this video being published. Click on the green download box to get the software. Let's take a look at what's actually in the downloads folder at the moment because some of this stuff is pre-staged. I have the box art for the game because you're going to see where that becomes important in just a minute. I also have the background image for the game, the actual disc image, and here is the download that we just got from PSX Place. It's a 7Z file, so you'll need to extract it with your favorite 7Z extraction software, and I have one linked in the description if you need it. If you follow this channel for any length of time at all, you'll know that I always recommend deleting a compressed volume once you're done with it to eliminate confusion when it comes to shuffling things around moving forward. All right, now you can go into the folder that you just uncompressed. You'll find a readme file here, which is valuable content, and then you'll find another folder to drill into. Come down to where it says ps2fpkg.exe, and I recommend running this as administrator. Some people have reported that without running this as administrator, the computer has not always created the package files as they've expected. This is the main graphic user interface for the PS2 FPKG creator. You can make more than one disc into a single package, but for this illustration, I'm just focused on Snoopy vs. the Red Baron, which is a single disc game. Click here to load up your disc image, and in this case, it's going to be in the downloads folder, and it's Snoopy vs. the Red Baron, and it's an ISO file. If you're loading a CD-based PlayStation 2 game, you want to select the bin file from the bin Q folder. Click on the game that you want to load, and you'll see it populate in the interface. Underneath the disk listings, you'll see a disk quantity number here. It's already set to 1, so everything's good. Also, you'll get a choice of emulators, and there are two of them. How do you know which one to pick? Let's take a look back at the PS2 emulation list one more time for confirmation. Aha, and there's the droid we're looking for. This one boots with the Rogue emulator. When you check the compatibility list and which games are working and not on PlayStation 2 for PS4, check to see if there's a listing for which emulator to run. No sense reinventing the wheel here. So given the choice between Jack 2 and Rogue 1, pick Rogue 1. These next two steps are optional, but they sure do make things look better on your PlayStation 4. To load up the tile or the cover art for the game you're looking for, click here. I've already pre-downloaded as you might remember. It's called Snoopy Case. Just double click on it and it will add it to the package file and install it on your PlayStation 4. And if you want to see the background or that kind of wallpaper that launches between clicking on the game tile and the loading screen for the PlayStation 2, 
load this file up. You can search Google and get these files with little difficulty. The game ID and game title should be pre-filled out for you. With all of these in place, you're prepared to create your FPKG file for your PlayStation 2 game. Click Create FPKG to continue. It's going to ask you where you want to put it. You cannot put them on the root of a storage device. You have to put them somewhere in a subdirectory on your computer. In this case, I'm just going to put it right in the downloads folder where all this other stuff is so that everything is in one location. Once you've chosen where you want to create the FPKG file in your computer, you'll get this confirmation message. Click OK to begin the process. I want to point out to you that the only confirmation you'll get that it's working is a message in the bottom left corner of the window that says creating PKG and some animated dots. This shouldn't take very long, usually only several minutes or so, depending upon the size of the game that you're attempting to convert. Once it's done with the conversion process, you'll get a confirmation message that has been created successfully. Click OK to continue, and then you can close out this software. Now that you have your fake package file complete, you need to copy it over to a USB storage device that's formatted in XFAT format. Go to the Downloads folder or wherever you created the FPKG file, select it, and copy it. Make sure you have that USB storage device in XFAT format connected to your computer and switch over to it. Then paste the fake package file to the root of the USB storage device. Now you can eject the USB storage device, put it in your PlayStation 4, and power on your PlayStation 4 system. If you're getting value from this content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on new PlayStation 4 content as it's posted to the channel. On your PlayStation 4 on system software 7.02 or lower, go ahead and run your jailbreak. In this case, I'm going to be running PS4 Hen through the jailbreak process on system software 7.02. You can run Hen, the homebrew enabler, or Mira either way. It makes no difference. Either one's going to give you access to install the fake package files in just a moment. Once you're back at your PlayStation 4 main menu, what you need to do is go up to the debug settings. So go up to settings in the top menu and then select settings with the X button. From here, it's a dive bomb all the way to the bottom. Press down on the D-pad to go all the way to the bottom of the settings menu and you'll see debug settings. Select debug settings with the X button and you'll see game as the first listing in the menu here. Select game with the X button. The first thing you'll see is package downloader, but you want package installer. Scroll down one with the D-pad to package installer and select it with the X button. The only package that's on your USB drive is Snoopy vs. the Red Baron or whatever game you copied over. Select it with the X button to install it. Depending upon the speed of your USB drive, this can take quite a while. I'm using a solid state drive in a USB 3.0 SATA dock and an SSD on the PlayStation 4 itself, so it only took about, well, 13 seconds. Not too shabby. Now you can just press the circle button on the controller repeatedly until you get back to the PlayStation 4 main menu. Back at the PlayStation 4 main menu, scroll down to the game tiles and you'll see exactly why you went to the extra effort to install those graphics files because here's the box art for Snoopy vs. the Red Baron. Press the X button to launch the game and instead of a generic logo there, you'll also see the wallpaper. You know, you and me as higher function of folks, we like to do things the best way possible, of course. Stick this out because I want you to see exactly what you're going to get if you install a game that says it has some glitches. This is important stuff. Once the game loads up, if you install the wrong emulator, like when I installed the Jack 2 emulator, it froze right here. But since we used the Rogue One A Star Wars Story emulator instead, it's going to keep on running right on through it. Remember, in the PlayStation 2 emulation wiki, it talked about seeing some black bars during the menus and so forth. Take a look here because this is exactly what's going to happen. It will not impact the ability to play the game though, and that's really important. The gameplay experience is going to be just fine. See the bars on the top and the bottom of the opening animation? They're going to be there, but it continues to play the animation just fine. Let's scroll ahead. Again, minor glitches with some bars and things here, but everything's working exactly as it should otherwise. Alright, let's go into the gameplay and see what happens. Everything's working exactly like it's supposed to. 
With only a few drop frames here and there, everything looks great, sounds great, and plays great. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get great original video game content as it's posted, including PlayStation 4 content. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comments and description below. Thanks so much for being here. I always enjoy our time together on YouTube. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.